We present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Andre Melly in just a minute. And as the minute was fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And once again we have these four intrepid players of the game who are going to try and do justice to the game and speak if they can for just a minute on some unlikely subject that I will give them without hesitation, without repetition and without deviating from the subject if they can. And if one of the others thinks they're guilty of this, they will challenge and whether I agree or disagree with the challenge, they will gain points or otherwise. That is how we try to play. And Kenneth Williams, will you begin this particular edition? The subject is Boswell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of that. So will you talk for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, of course, he's best known to us for his journal and especially his remarks about Johnson. They reckon he was a bit of a sycophant and that he provoked a lot of the, the sayings himself. But there is a charming anecdote about them taking oars at the temple steps. <laughs> and when they got in, he lent against the side of the boat and he looked at the old boy and he said do you think this boy would row us any better if he was educated <laughs> and Johnson said by way of reply to the boy what would you give to know of the Argonauts and the reply was why sir I would give what I have and that stumped him. Clement Freud. He was <laughs> Deviation. Why? That was not a charming anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is a... charming, isn't it? I'll tell you what I do. Charming can be interpreted in many different ways. <laughs> and charming. also you can say that was charming. I mean, it was quite the reverse of it. Oh. So I think the... I would have let you have it for hesitation. He couldn't have gone much slower without falling down, I don't think. <laughs> So, as I disagree with that challenge, Kenneth gets a point, and there are three seconds left for Boswell Kenneth starting now. And, of course, he tells us that David Garrick hung on the lapels of the old boy and said, the sight of you just do me good. Well, uh, the whistle tells us that 60 seconds is up, and whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point. Derek, will you begin the next round for us? The subject is the Russian steps. Will you speak about that for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, of course, I used to be a tremendous devotee of the Black Bottom. <laughs> and then I went, after a while, to Vladivostok, where I was shown the Russian steps. And it's a much more different and more complicated <laughs> but uh, Andre Melly, why did you challenge? Tri hesitation tripped over. Himself. Yes, he did trip over. He's just going to be so interesting about all these weird dances. So I must, uh, unfortunately, give it away from you, Derek. <laughs> Uh, and say Andre has a point, and there are 49 seconds for the Russian steps, Andre, starting now. Stand on your left foot and lift your right foot and <coughs> jump in the air. Uh, Clement Foy, why have you challenged? Repetition of foot. Yes, indeed there was. So, Clement, you get a point, and there are 45 seconds for the Russian steps, starting now. The Chinese skips and the Japanese hops, but the Russian steps. This is one of the things that is always plain when you walk east of Dover. This is also a geographical location, which no one has yet mentioned. I thought it might be time to say this. Uh, uh, Derek Nimmer, why do you Well, we don't want all his personal opinions, do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on with the subject. <laughs> yes, it's your you I'm thinking <laughs> about. <laughs> yes, personal, wasn't it? Well, I, 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 he goes on like that, doesn't he? So why do you challenge? Oh, mumbling through his beard. <laughs> You've deviation. got a very well-deserved laugh, but you haven't established a point of deviation, so Clement Foy <laughs> continues with the subject. There are 24 seconds left for the Russian step, Clement, starting now. The district is flat and cold, and in the winter, people freeze, shiver, and hardly ever dance at all. In many works of literature, you find the Russian steps mentioned, and in particular, Siberia, which is possibly the hardest, toughest step of them all. Uh, Derek Nimmer, why do you Too many steps. We've had Remedy. the Russian steps, steps and steps, uh, yes, when he says steps again, not in the context of the actual uh, subject on the card, it is um, repetition. So there are five seconds for you, Derek. Russian steps starting now. Well, I left on the Trans Siberian Railway and the way I spread across the tundra, and there I saw. <laughs> Andre Melly, will you begin the next round for us? The subject is luck. Quite 
something you definitely need, I think, if you want to play this game, but will you try and talk about it 60 seconds, starting now? There are two kinds, the good one and the bad one. Good luck is something that you wish people when they're doing something very dangerous, like jumping out of an aeroplane or getting married. And <laughs> bad luck is something you say when the parachute didn't open or the marriage bust up. And some people are very suspicious. Uh, superstitious. <laughs> Derek Nimmo, why are you challenging? Hesitation. Yes, hesitation. Yes, you shouldn't have corrected yourself, Andre. 26 seconds for luck, Derek, starting now. Oh. I remember when I was a very young soldier being down on my luck. Outside Catrick, which is in Yorkshire, I had a most terrible time, really, because I had a knapsack on and a little billy can by my side. And as they, I came out of the charge, they had me in the uh, most warm black cat. Hesitation. Hesitation, I agree, yes. Yeah. I was in Clement. full flood. Full Absolutely full flood. Full Full flood with a hesitation in the middle of the flood. And <laughs> Clement takes the subject of luck, nine and a half seconds, starting now. There was an old man called Hunt who took his sister out to play rugger, which was terribly bad luck, because <laughs> at the school to which Derek she Nimmer, went... why have you challenged? I'm sorry, I had an itchy thumb. Yes, you had an itchy thumb. <laughs> you thought it was deviation. Um, Clement still has another point and the subject, and two seconds left, starting now. Because she was lucky enough to go to school where games were not compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> so Clement Freud's clever and able use of words has managed to give him three very rapid points and given him the lead at the end of that round. Um, Clement Freud, will you begin the next round for us? The subject is foibles. Will you talk on that for 60 seconds, starting now? One of the few foibles that I have is when walking down Piccadilly on one leg, as I pass Green Park. Uh, Derek Nimmer, why do you challenge? Deviation. If you, you've only got one leg, you hop. You don't walk. <laughs> you can't walk down. I think that's a very clever challenge that deserves the subject and a point. And there are 47 seconds for foibles, Derek, starting now. I have so many foibles, Rally. It does give me terrible pleasure to tell you all about them, actually. One is that every Tuesday morning during Lent, I go into the middle of the round pond wearing only a strapless bra and <laughs> a green hat which is shaped like, oh, a mosquito <laughs> net. Uh, Kenneth Williams, Michael challenged. Deviation. These are eccentricities. They're not foibles. If he goes about <laughs> Kenneth, I will give you a bonus point for cleverness and leave the subject oh with Derek because it could still be a foible. And 35 seconds left for foibles, uh, Derek, starting now. All sorts of people. Uh, Clement Freud challenged. <laughs> Hesitation. Hesitation, Clement, you get a point on the subject. 34 <laughs> seconds left. Grace! Absolutely, totally disgraceful. Withhold your indignant, sir. <laughs> <laughs> why? One of the longest pauses we've had today. And why was it disgraceful? I just think it's a disgrace, that's all. I was personal opinion. He makes personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Clement gets a point, and he takes over the subject of foibles. 34 seconds left, starting now. Limping eastwards towards Leicester Square, I have this extraordinary thing about avoiding ladders that are propped up against buildings. There was one day in October 1949 when I was walking, as I've intimated, towards my goal when I passed under such an obstruction and a bucket fell upon my head, ever since which time I have desisted from so doing and now walk towards the <coughs> northwest uh, of London. Do you think wife, you a repetition of walk? Yes, we I limped more, before. Yes, yes, because you limped, actually, you having established that you were limping, you then said walking, which could have been deviation, but you say you said walking twice, and Derek gets a point, and there are six walking seconds for foibles, Derek, starting now. There was a young lady called Foible <laughs> who always sat on the toy board. Whenever she went out, she gave her such a shout. Good luck. <laughs> 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 it was very good, wasn't it? I mean, the stanchion was terrible, but it was an arm as it came. So, when the whistle went then, Derek was speaking, and he gains that extra point. Uh, Kenneth, will you begin the next round for us? The subject following foibles is scruples. Can you talk about that for 60 seconds, starting now? As I understand it, this is the quality of hesitation in making any kind... Uh, Derek Nimmer, why do you challenge? Hesitation. <laughs> No, I thought you were going to say something else, which I would have granted, but I disagree with the hesitation. 47 seconds left for scruples, Kenneth, starting now. Of judgment, such as I will not scruple 
in this matter. Now, it's derived from an ancient apothecary's weight, one of the tiniest there is, and as you probably know, it is Latin <laughs> for pebble. <laughs> Clement Freud, why, why did you challenge? Hesitation. What are you talking about? No, he about? didn't hesitate. He did pretty well everything else, but he didn't <laughs> hesitate. <laughs> he went terribly quiet and he giggled. Mm. No, he never actually hesitated. So, Kenneth, there are 36 <laughs> seconds for scruples, Kenneth, starting now. And, of course, scrupulosity. Thus, I have not used the word again. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Why have you challenged? Repetition. Ha ha. Oh, yes. what? <laughs> I agree, you take a point, and there are 27 seconds for scruples starting now. There was a man who had no scruples, and the funny thing about him was he always had to limp every game and game. Andre Mary, you have challenged. <laughs> who was the challenge there? It was Andre Mary's challenge. She got in first. But I knew then. You knew then, and I quite agree with you. We won't go into it. So, Andre, you take over the subject, and there are 18 seconds left for scruples starting now. These are things you're supposed to have if you're a really honourable person, like paying for your ticket in the bus when nobody's asked you. Uh, and... Kenneth Williams, why have you challenged? This is not what the word means. Therefore, it's deviation. What does it mean, then? What she's talking about is honesty. Yes, but you can, you can have a scruple about being scrupulously honest. You can be scrupulously evil, my dear fellow. <laughs> I know, and you can be scrupulously honest. Yes, and she's is... saying it means paying for your fare, which is being no, honest, which no. it doesn't mean. She said the one She of... said it means paying for your fare. Now, you can't deny it. You go back on that, and I... I'll trounce you, sir. She's... I will trounce you. She said that it means paying for your fare, and she is very scrupulous about this. It is one of her scruples that she always pays for her fare. Oh, you should have been a barrister. <laughs> oh. So Andre Mellie gets another point, and there are ten seconds left, Andre, for scruples, starting now. Of course, you can be scrupulously dishonest, and this means... Uh, Kenneth Williams, why have you challenged? Repetition, we've already established that. I just said you were scrupulously evil. We've had scrupulous already, so no, you actually... Yeah, so, so he did it between yeah, in the challenge. You challenged for sorry, deviation, didn't you? Deviation, didn't you? Yes, no, it wasn't deviation. No, I said repetition. Of I what? just said it. That we've already established it. You can't, you can't say repetition, oh, we've already gracious. established it. What are you... She said repetition. you could be scrupulously dishonest. I've already said you could be scrupulously evil. So we've established it, haven't you? In But what, you can't... This, you haven't established your challenge. <laughs> You said... Oh, good. I said repetition. That is establishing the challenge, surely. Of what? Repetition of what? <laughs> well, I've already established. <laughs> it, it, you can only be had for repetition of a word. I what? can't be had for anything. <laughs> <laughs> what has she been? Oh, what yeah, words? Go on, then. No, All what right. words has she been repetitious of? I forget now, dear. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd said repetition of scrupulous, I would have given it to you, but as you haven't, I have to give it back to Andre Merlin and said there are five seconds, Andre, for scruples starting now. This word is spelt S C R U P L E S. And as Andre Melly was speaking at the end of that round, she <coughs> gains an extra point, and I'm delighted we've heard her voice so much because she's got back with her scruples into the game again against the cut and thrust of these three abominable players. <laughs> Let us continue with Derek Nimmo talking on girdles. What? <laughs> Girdles is the subject, Derek. Can you talk about that for 60 seconds, starting now? I have an unusually long silken girdle with tassels at both ends. <laughs> this I wear round my dressing gown. It can also be used in the American sense as a piece of elastic. I'm here to reveal to the audience assembled both at home and in the studio that at least one member of the male team is at this moment wearing an elastic girdle to keep in his bulging ob abdomen. <laughs> Andre Mellie, you've challenged. I hesitate. Yes, indeed, Absolutely. and we will never know who's bulging abdomen. <laughs> Derek Nemo <laughs> thinks his girdle. Kenneth has no scruples about it. He stood up and shown it to the audience. <laughs> I'd better stand up as well. 
No one else is standing, so we'll continue. <laughs> Uh, Andre, you have a point. 30 seconds for girdles starting now. They're usually flesh-coloured. They can be white, and they're inclined to wrinkle, but they're not supposed to. They have small suspenders <coughs> attached to the bottom of them, usually <coughs> four. Uh, Derek Nimmer, why have you challenged? Deviation. Mine hasn't. <laughs> now we know! <laughs> Whether yours has or not is very kind of you to own up, but she was not deviating from the subject, so Andre takes another point, and 19 seconds left, starting now. Some of these garments don't have small suspenders on the bottom. Uh, Derek, never wear Repetition of suspenders. Yes, indeed, there was, Derek, so you take over the subject. 15 seconds left, starting now. Of course, I awfully like girdle cakes. They're terribly nice. You put them in front of the fire, on a girdle. Uh, uh, Kenneth Lewis, why do you chuck? They're necessary as girdle cakes. They're griddle cakes. No, girdle cakes. <laughs> <laughs> girdle cakes or griddle cakes, it depends on the phraseology you use. So Derek Nimmer has another point, and there are ten seconds left for girdles, starting now. I think it's particularly unpleasant when bald-headed men with beards wear these objects, because I do think it's an absolute disgrace when they keep in their middle-aged paunch with an elasticated uh, garment. Freud, why and I... challenge? Deviation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Gone too far. The wisdom of Solomon. The awful thing is, you see, according to this, the, this, the, the show, he was not deviating from the subject. But we all knew he was getting a Clement Freud. Were you getting a Clement Freud then? Of course I wasn't. I wouldn't Absolutely. dream. We are. He wouldn't dream. Not so I won't give any points away because someone felt intimidated. And there are no points awarded on that. Derek continues with the subject of girdles. One second left, starting now. They're absolutely delicious. <laughs> As Derek was speaking and gets another point when the whistle goes, he goes a little further into the lead at the end of that round. Andre Melly, will you begin the next round? The subject is noodles. 60 seconds, Andre, starting now. These are a kind of Chinese spaghetti that are not really very nice when they're boiled and served with butter, but are very delicious when crispy and given to you with chicken chow mein or one of those things. They are made, I imagine, out of Chinese flour and water. <laughs> Derek Nimmer, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Hesitation, I agree, Derek. So there are 42 seconds left for noodles, Derek, starting now. There are lots of noodles in this world, and I am one of them. <laughs> I found this out at a very early age. It was pointed out to me by my great aunt Beatrice, who lives in Prestat. And she turned to me and said, Derek, you are a noodle. I said, Thank you very much. Very kind of you to tell me. And ever since then, I've remembered it, and I go through life with this great cross round my neck with a noodle. What? <laughs> Clement Freud, why do you chat? Deviation. Why? You can't have a noodle cross round your neck. <laughs> Clement oh, Freud has a point, and there are 20 seconds for left for mm. noodles, Clement, starting now. Noodle is to English. English gastronomy want spaghetti, tagliatelle, cannelloni, and other members of the pasta family are in the Italian cuisine or cochino. And it is a most delectable grocery which you can buy at any good store or even supermarket. You boil it roughly for 12 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, Those of you who don't know will never find out how long to boil it. But anyway, Clement Freud gets another point for speaking when the whistle went, and he's now creeping up on Derek Nimmo. Clement Freud, will you begin the next round? What an apt subject for this game, brevity. Can you talk on the subject, though, for 60 seconds, starting now? No. <laughs> Derek Nimmo, you challenge. Why? Well... Hesitation. <laughs> yes, that was. A very generous <laughs> hesitation, I think. He really played the game for the sake of the game. And Derek Nemo, 59 seconds for the subject of brevity, starting now. No. <laughs> Clement Freud. Repetition. <laughs> I do love it when they're sporting and throw it back to each other like that. Uh, 58 seconds for brevity, Clement, starting now. Brevity is the quality of being brief, which many people have, but I do not possess. In fact, when I am asked to keep to the point, to go on, and to confine myself to a limited period of time, I very often fail and gurgle. Derek Nimmer, why have you challenged? Deviation. Why? Because he always wins. <laughs> Derek Nemo, you happen to be winning at this particular time, so your challenge is not accurate. So Derek Clement Freud gets another point, and there uh, are 43 seconds left for brevity, Clement, starting now. There is on the radio a game called Wait a Minute. No, it's just... <laughs> 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 Hesitation. Hesitation, yes. 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> 32 <laughs> seconds left for brevity. Andre Mellie <coughs> starting now. This is something that if you want to succeed in this particular game, you have to have an extreme absence of. The Irish uh, haven't very much of it, and I suppose that the nation which practices it the most is uh, the... Uh, uh, Derek Nimmo. Hesitation. Hesitation, <laughs> yes. I think she was pleased to be helped out. There are 17 seconds for brevity, Derek, starting now. I think... To be... Uh, Freud, right, Hesitation. Hesitation, yes. And there are 14 seconds for brevity, Clement, starting now. At school, one used to get exercises in brevity. Uh, Derek Nemo, you have Hesitation. a chance. Hesitation, yes. These two are battling it out. Ding dong, 10 seconds, brevity, Derek, starting now. I always think great brevity should be treated with the utmost severity. That is a little rhyme that I've made up on the subject of brevity, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Derek Nimmo said a little while ago that Clement Freud always wins. He does win, I think, most of all. But at this particular stage of this game, Derek Nimmo has what I would call a commanding lead. Uh, Kenneth, will you begin the next round? The subject is absolutely so apt for you. Nonchalance. <laughs> will you go, in your inimitable way, on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? This is the practice of being apparently unmoved by any kind of adversity, you see, and always having <laughs> one's composure <laughs> perfectly. Derek Nimmo, why do you challenge? Well, he sort of put his tongue out at me. Like, I don't know what I was saying. You see, you always see, then. Why do you challenge, uh, well, I, was, I was rather shocked, really. <laughs> <laughs> a little upset. There's no real Well, challenge. as you cannot the get a point... shocked. The king will have no horses, yes. I can tell you. <laughs> as you cannot get, you cannot get a point for being shocked, Kenneth gets a point. <laughs> and there are 45 seconds for you to continue in your nonchalant way on nonchalance starting now. Indeed, Maudie Fittleworth, better known, of course, by her subtitle, Fun with a Frankfurter, was <laughs> one of the greatest exponents of nonchalance in the business. Because every <laughs> time her Frankfurter... Well, no, no hesitation. No hesitation, you fool. I'm all right. <laughs> You weren't all right. Maudie, I was. Maury Frankfurter or whatever, Little Hamlet. Maury Fiddle, but found with the Frankfurter was well known. Yes. <laughs> and she sent you going then, didn't she? That was hesitating. You, you'd almost I never hesitated. Not, not for a moment. Not for a moment. No, absolutely right. You continue with uh, your subject of nonchalance, Kenny, 30 seconds, starting now. Well, she was in dead trouble with the Board of Trade because they said the skins were really for export, you see. <laughs> <laughs> but she remained... Derek Nemo, why have you challenged? <laughs> What has this got to do with nonchalance? I she can think of nothing more away. nonchalance than Maudie Fittleworth going up to the board of the trade without Frankfurter. It's the most nonchalant thing I've ever heard in all my life. <laughs> Kenneth, you get another point and continue with 24 uh, seconds left, starting now. And she never once, in the face of any disaster, revealed any feelings of apprehension. Oh, no. When it come to Mal in the Claddock, in she stuck the poker and up the fumes would evaporate. People were going, oh, and giving the hell. <laughs> Clement Troy, why do you challenge? Hesitation. Yes, there was oh, a hesitation. Wrong. I think it was one of the... <laughs> While he may not have been on the subject, he gave one of the finest displays of nonchalance I've ever seen in all my life. <laughs> but Clement Freud gets another point, and there are three and a half seconds left for nonchalance. Clement, starting now. One of the finest displays of nonchalance I have ever come across was in a garden. <laughs> Well, uh, Clement Freud gets the extra point of speaking at the end of that round, and may I give the final score, because that is the end of the show. Uh, Kenneth Williams was just in fourth place, only just Kenneth, no. behind Andre Melly, who was in third place, a little way behind Clement Freud, and quite a way behind this week's winner, Derek Nimmo. <laughs> I'm afraid that is all we have time for. If anybody wants to have fun with a Frankfurter, may I just say they should write <laughs> to Maudy Little Hampton, care of Kenneth Williams, and they might get a nonchalant reply. <laughs> we do hope you've enjoyed this nonchalant game. Goodbye from us all. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messeter and produced by Simon Brett.